Hi YouTube! Welcome to my channel. This is my very first video that I'm going to be doing on my channel called Accounting for Luxury. I am a tax accountant and very, very recent graduate student, and so my luxury collection that I have been curating over the past 10 years has had to be both very intentional and done very reasonably. And I wanted to do this channel to show people that luxury can be done really affordably. You don't have to have massive hauls, you don't have to get everything in the world, but you can get a lot of really nice stuff really smartly and really well but if you do so mindfully. And so I thought that for my very first video, I would do a video on what I think are the top five things you should get as your first five luxury purchases. So first off, number one is probably what a lot of people end up getting as their very first luxury piece, and that is a luxury handbag. So my luxury handbag that I just showed is my Palos BB by Louis Vuitton. And a lot of people go with Louis Vuitton as their first bag. Louis Vuitton is considered probably the highest of the entry level brands. Um, brands like Chanel or Dior or Hermes are a much higher price point, whereas Louis Vuitton does have higher price point bags, but they also have a lot of entry level bags. Um, and part of that is because they have this super, super nice canvas line like this canvas that I have, this bag is over four years old and it still looks brand new. It still has fantastic shape. There's not a mark on it. The only thing you can tell is a little bit of tarnishing on the hardware. Um, but other than that, even that I can polish up and make it look pretty much like new. And so I really recommend going with Louis Vuitton. I also really recommend to go into the store to get your very first luxury purchase. It's really special being able to walk out carrying that big orange bag or whatever brand you end up deciding to go with and it's just, it's a really nice experience going in, picking out the bag, seeing it wrapped up for you, and then getting it home and getting to open it up. It's just really, really, really special. And I really think that the Louis Vuitton canvas, it's just so durable. It's a bag that will last you a lifetime if you take good care of it. And since it's your first piece, like that's a really special piece that you're going to want to keep in your collection anyway. Louis Vuitton has three different canvas prints. They have the monogram, which is what I just showed you here. Um, they also have the checkerboard designs, which are a damier. They come in the damier abine, which is brown, and they come in the damier azur, which is white. And I would recommend staying away from the white just because white does have color transfer. Um, because it is a white bag, so you have to be careful what you wear and it can get stained more. Um, the white bags, as well as some of the monogram bags, also have the very light leather, which is called Vachetta. Over time, it will get what's called a lovely patina, which is where it darkens up, but it can get water spots, and those water spots don't come out. Um, that being said, if you take good care of your bag, if you don't carry it out in the rain all the time, like, it's not going to get water spots. Um, but without further ado, I have, I believe, four bags that I'm going to recommend you look at as your first bags. I recommend staying away from the Speedies and the Neverfulls because everybody has those bags and they aren't really that special. There's also so many counterfeits of those bags out there. Um, and for someone who, once you get used to seeing the luxury, you'll be able to spot the counterfeits really easily. And for me, I just didn't want a bag that there were so many counterfeits of. My bag, I've actually never seen anyone carrying the exact same bag in the same size in the same color combination that I have. That being said, it was a super hard bag to get and was almost always sold out. Um, but I'm super, super glad that I got it. It was actually my birthday present, or not my birthday, my graduation present from college from my grandmother. And so it's doubly special because of that. But the first bag I'm going to recommend, and for items that I don't have in this video, I'm going to try and put a picture of them up here on the screen so that you can see what they look like. But the first bag is the Alma PM in the Demi Air Bean. You know, this is one of the most classic bags from Louis Vuitton. It's such a classic silhouette. I love this bag. I've thought about adding this collection, this bag to my collection in maybe like a bag from 1996, which is my birth year. And the reason I say the Demi Abine is because it doesn't have the risk of the Vachetta getting water staining the way that the monogram would. It also comes in other leathers as well, which are really nice, but the canvas is the most affordable option. It is $1,660. This bag has a really nice zipper. It does not have a shoulder strap. The smaller BB version does. Um, the bigger MM does not. However, you can purchase a shoulder strap either from the store or pre-loved and add that onto it just fine. I've seen plenty of people do that, um, but it's a really nice size bag. Like it's not the smallest bag in the world. It's not oversized. It's just a good, decent size if you don't have to carry a ton with you. Um, now, if a zipper is not that important to you, the second bag that I'm going to recommend 
is the Neo Noe in the monogram with the black leather. So that would be the same looking combination as this bag. But the Neo Noe is a new take on the bucket bag that was originally designed to hold five wine bottles. And so it's very, very roomy. It has a drawstring closure, so it's not a zipper. If a zipper is important to you, this bag is not for you. If a super structured bag is important for you, this bag is not for you. But if you want more of like a casual bag, this one's really good. It does come with a shoulder strap, so you can wear it crossbody, you can wear it on the shoulder. Um, it's it's a very convenient bag. I like this the look of the bag. For me, I just want a little bit more security, so it's not a bag that I'll add to my collection, but it's a super pretty bag, super durable. Um, a lot of people have it. Well, not a lot of people, um, but a good amount of people have it, that there are enough reviews on YouTube that you could check it out if you're considering it. Um, Third on the list is the Pochette Matisse. This is another bag that I'm considering adding to my collection in the Empreint leather, but I'm recommending it in the canvas. Um, there is the regular monogram, which does have a little bit of vachetta on top. Um, there's also the reverse monogram, which has no vachetta. Um, it has the regular monogram as well as, I call it like a mustardy yellow color for the base, and then it has like brown for the actual monogram itself. Um, very pretty bags. I love this bag particularly because it has a shoulder strap that is detachable. You're able to go day to night super well because you can wear it as a crossbody, you can wear it on your shoulder, you can take the shoulder strap off, carry it as a clutch to dinner. Fantastic bag. It doesn't have a zipper, but it does have a super strong S-lock closure, so it is a really secure bag. Like You don't have to worry about people just being able to like pull the flap up or reach in or whatever. Um, it's another bag that I'm considering adding, like super nice bag. It is $2,050 right now. Um, another thing I need to mention is that these prices might fluctuate some over the next few weeks because Louis Vuitton is getting ready to do another price increase. Most luxury designers do price increases regularly, particularly the upper echelon of the designer houses. So like Gucci, Louis, Prada, um, Chanel, Hermes, you're, you're going to see price increases, so it might go up a few dollars. Um, unfortunately, we never really see price decreases. And then the fourth bag, which is for people who want a bigger bag is the Lymington, and that is in the Demi Arbin. And this was actually my mother's first bag, and so she carries it, she loves it. It is a gorgeous bag. It has a zipper, it has a shoulder strap, it has handles. You can carry it so many different ways. It also has a really beautiful tassel detail on it, which I think just makes it kind of a little bit more special. Um, but she loves that bag. It's a fantastic bag. It was her first bag. Um, absolutely would recommend that if you're someone who likes a bigger bag, because it is a bigger bag, that does not look like a tote bag. Um, so that is it for the bag category. Now on to category number two, which is wallets. So with wallets, once you get your handbag, it's kind of like, like if you give a mouse a cookie, if you give a girl a handbag, she's going to want a wallet. The first one that I'm recommending is my personal wallet, which is the Louis Vuitton Victorine wallet. Let me see if I can get it to zoom in. There we go, now it's focusing. So on the inside, it has a whole bunch of credit card slots, it has three credit card slots. I can fit about four more behind each of these because it's pretty big. It also has a flat open area for cash and a zip area for coins. It can fit in a clutch, it's small enough that it can fit in a clutch. All the wallets that I'm recommending are small, are small wallets for a couple of reasons. One, they're more versatile in different sizes of bags. Two, the bigger, long, like rectangular wallets tend to get more expensive in price. And I wanted to kind of stay away from that, particularly because I don't like to spend a whole lot of money on my small leather goods. I don't want to spend $1,000 on a wallet when I could get another handbag for $1,000. Um, but that's just me personally. If you want a big wallet, like, go for the big wallet. But these are all going to be small wallet recommendations. So the Louis Vuitton Victorine, mine had the brown interior. It also comes with a light pink, which is called Rose Ballerine, and a dark pink, which is called Fuchsia. For the interior colors, um, I love this wallet. I would absolutely buy this wallet again. Now, it is more expensive than when I bought it. I bought it a few years ago. It is now $570. Um, so, I mean, it's not the most expensive wallet on this list, but I mean, it is it is pricier, but it's a really good price point for a luxury wallet. Because keep in mind, these are luxury goods. They are going to be more expensive than something that you would get at Kate Spade, Michael Kors, Coach, that type of thing. Um, so the second wallet on the list is actually from Chanel. And this is the Chanel Classic card holder. I have my notes down here, which is why I keep looking down. Um, and it is $550. The thing that I really like about this is that it looks just like the Chanel Classic flaps. So the Chanel Classic flap handbag, that's the quilted bag with the CC on it. You've probably seen it a whole bunch everywhere. But the small size in that bag starts at $7,100 plus tax in the US. 
and that's very very pricey i cannot afford that handbag at that price however the small card holder wallet which has the same look has the same shape has the same cc it is 550 dollars and it comes in so many different colors and every season they're releasing more colors in it um things like the black are always going to be in the collection but like for instance coming out in i think about a month sometime in september maybe they are going to be releasing <coughs> excuse me they're going to be releasing a whole bunch of actually metallic colors in like like blue metallic and purple metallic and pink metallic as well as other color leathers so they release collections every couple of months which means that every couple of months there will be new colors if there's something that you don't like now the downside to chanel is that you do actually have to go into the store or contact an essay in order to get one new um and there aren't as many chanel boutiques i feel like as there are louis vuitton boutiques i feel like that there are more louis vuittons it's more easy to get. They also, Chanel limits their products so there aren't as many available. Um, but you can still get your hands on it, absolutely. Like that's, this is a item that they generally keep in stock. Um, now the downside to this particular wallet is that there is no separate spot for coins. So if you're someone that has a lot of coins, probably don't go with this wallet. But when the wallet opens up, it has a big just compartment and then a small little device. Like you can put like your like driver's license, most used credit cards in the front. Um, but you can fit like, 20 plus credit cards in there um and you can fit cash in there folded up and so like it's a very compact wallet that actually holds a lot um and it's a wallet that, like i've considered maybe getting like if i ever needed to replace my louis vuitton one i love my louis vuitton one enough that i'm keeping it but if i ever needed a second wallet that's definitely one that i would consider because i really don't have that many coins anymore because we generally just use credit cards um so the next two and the last two in my wallet category are from gucci so the first one is the Gucci Diana uh, card case. And that wallet has the zipper compartment for coins. It has, I think it's four slots for credit cards. It has an open area for cash. Um, so like it'll hold a decent amount. Um, it's not gonna hold that many credit cards if you have a whole lot of credit cards. But fun fact, the Gucci, the Gucci Diana line is actually named in honor of Princess Diana. And they have recently re-released several other items in this line that she carried. So that's kind of special. Um, it also comes in just a solid leather. And then it has the GG side-by-side -side logo on it. As well as a touch of bamboo, which is super, super Gucci. I really personally like the bright green color in the leather. I saw it in person. Gorgeous green leather color. Um, so that's a good option for a wallet. It is also $550. So same price as the Chanel. Um, but if you need more cards but still want to have a smaller wallet there is the gucci jackie 1996 i'm sorry 1961 french flap wallet and that is the most expensive wallet that i'm recommending which is 690 dollars it has so many slots for cards it can absolutely hold as much as my victorine um it is though the downside to it is that it is in a fabric it's in the gucci fabric with the gg logo on it and it has the fabric ribbon that goes around it um it's a beautiful wallet though it does hold a lot very nice um and it is actually named after jackie kennedy so moving on to the third item that i recommend and this is actually an item that i just got recently it's something that i wanted for a while but had never gotten and was lucky enough to be gifted them by some family members and that is my burberry cashmere scarf and this one is in the archive beige which is the most classic burberry color it's got the beige the black the red so it goes with everything let me just put it on and stand up. So like, it's a very long length scarf. It's not going to come to your knees or anything like that, but it's very long length. If I put it on like this, you can see, like it comes down, like you can totally tuck into a jacket. I wouldn't just wear it like this on its own, um, but it definitely, it's a wonderful scarf. It's super soft and cashmere to me can sometimes be itchy, but this cashmere is super high quality. It's 100% cashmere made in Scotland absolutely gorgeous scarf and it comes in so many different colors i have this color i also have a tan brown and white colorway but it has their blues pinks reds i mean like any color that you want you can find it in this scarf i personally recommend the archive beige just because it is the most classic burberry scarf and it's unisex so you can wear it your significant other can wear it if you wanted to share it with a parent if you live at home or a sibling if you live with them like that's totally yeah, an option it is a fabulous scarf. It is priced at $470 right now, and that pretty much stays the same. You can actually occasionally find these scarves in the outlets. The I've never seen the archive beige in the outlet, but I have seen the pinks and the blues 
um, in there and they, and the reds, I've seen those in there and they're normally maybe like $300 I think in the outlet. So you can save some money if you find it in an outlet. There aren't that many Burberry outlets but you can find them. Um, then moving on to category number four which is a signature piece of jewelry. So I'm actually wearing my favorite piece of jewelry right now which I'm going to lean forward hopefully it'll zoom in which is my Tiffany yeah, necklace. It is my return to Tiffany toggle necklace. So mine is with a circle on it. And that's because my grandmother actually customized it for me for my high school graduation and removing the heart. It comes with a return to Tiffany heart on it. Um, but you can add more hearts, you can layer things. Let me show you the heart version, which this is actually my mother-in-law's and she had her initials engraved onto her heart. The back is still a return to Tiffany, but that has her initials on it. Um, my mother has one that's just the return to Tiffany. It, our grandmother-in-law has one. I mean, it's, it's a piece that can last you throughout your whole life. And it's a very, very classic Tiffany piece. They also have ones that don't have the toggle. Um, the toggle, I've never had an issue with it coming undone. It's super secure. But, um, they do have one that doesn't have the toggle. I don't think it's as feminine looking or as elegant. I love this necklace. It is my favorite piece in my collection. It was my second piece of Tiffany. My first was my key that my grandmother gave me as well. She gave me a lot of my luxury items for various special occasions, but I love this necklace. It is super special to me and I highly recommend it. It is more expensive. It actually went through a very big price increase uh, last year, I think, and so it is now $700. So that is the first piece. The second piece that I would recommend is from David Yearman. And this is for someone who wants something that's more simple and that also likes mixed metals. And that is this beautiful cable crossover. It can have more silver or more gold, depending on the way that you put it on. This is probably my most worn piece. It was actually a gift from my father-in-law and mother-in-law, my first Christmas that I was engaged to my husband. And I probably wear this necklace more than any other just because it goes with everything. I can wear it if I'm wearing gold, I can wear it if I'm wearing silver. And it's a beautiful necklace and it's super lightweight. I've never once had to polish this necklace. I do have to polish my Tiffany every few months or so with the polishing cloth just to keep it really nice and shiny. Um, I've not had a problem with my Yearman at all. Um, the third piece, oh, I'm sorry, price on that. Price on that is $650. They also have versions that are all silver with diamonds that are gold, but I really like the one that is the silver with the gold mix. The third item I'm going to recommend is also from David Yearman, and that is one of their classic cable bracelets. These range in price from $395 up to about $650 for the sterling silver classic cables. David Yearman, I will say, they do not seem to have price increases. Like the price that my bracelet was that I'm about to show you is the same price that it is today and I got it three years ago. Um, this was actually a gift from my husband. This one is my personal favorite that I have. It has the gold on it as well as the pearl and it's sterling silver. I wear this pretty much every day um, and I just find it to be so beautiful, so elegant. It can go with a t-shirt and shorts. It can go with a beautiful elegant dress like I wore it at my cousin's wedding this past weekend. Um, I absolutely love, 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 love this bracelet um, and I highly recommend it. They also come in different sizes. My wrist is really small. It's about six inches around and so I wear the small and when I pull it on I can tighten it if I need to and then I can loosen it back up to pull it off and that does not harm the bracelet at all. They also have small, medium, large sizes and there are different thicknesses as well if you want something that's a thicker bracelet. So that is it for the jewelry. And then the fifth and final thing that I have on my list is a pair of luxury designer pumps. Specifically classic pumps from either Christian Louboutin or Jimmy Choo. So these to me are the two most elegant pumps in the world. I love them. They are also super comfortable. Now Christian Louboutin um, does have the reputation for being really, really uncomfortable. Well, I wear four to five inch heels all the time, zero issue whatsoever. I can walk in any type of heel. The Soke pumps by Christian Louboutin, which are the most iconic ones, I stood up in those and immediately sat back down and took them off because they were the most uncomfortable things I'd ever put on my feet. They looked fantastic because he, his shoes are designed to make your feet and legs look as amazing as possible. Those were uncomfortable. However, my Decolette pumps, which I think are just absolutely beautiful. Um, trying to make sure that it focuses on this and not my face. But these are 100 millimeter pumps. I was able to wear these at my cousin's wedding. I put them on at 2.30. I didn't take them on 
take them off until 10 30 when we left the wedding um uh, i will say that my legs were kind of tired at the end just where i haven't worn heels as much during the pandemic but these were fantastic my feet did not hurt at all my feet were totally fine they weren't swollen like these are fantastic pumps um that being said my legs did get a little bit tired after about four hours which I don't have an issue with in my Jimmy Choo pumps. And my Jimmy Choo pumps, I'm able to shop in all day, zero issue, get home, feet and legs are fine. And the ones that I'm referring to are, oh, price on the Louboutin pumps, they start at $6.95 and they go up. You, say, you can sometimes get them on sale, but those are normally in like weird colors, like crazy ones. Um, the traditional ones don't typically go on sale. Oh, so the Jimmy Choo pumps that I recommend are the Romy pumps. And they have a little bit more of a pointed toe than the Louboutin decolettes, but not a crazy, crazy pointed toe. I love these shoes, they are super comfortable. And the really nice thing about Jimmy Choo, one, the website runs sales, um, both in the summer and in the winter. They are good sales that can be like 50% off, even some more classic shoes, but they have outlets. And at the outlets in Orlando, there was one pair of shoes left these they were a size 40. I'm not a size 40. I am a size 36 and a half or 37 which is the same as a six and a half or a seven and I was so disappointed they were 40 that they weren't in my size but the girl said well there is one more pair in the country and they are in New York. She called the New York store. They did still have them in my size. They were able to ship them to me and because it was New York it was tax-free. It was also free shipping. I got these pumps which are regular $600 pumps for $135. Like, I would have had to pay that for a pair of Michael Kors pumps from Milk. Like, these are amazing, and the quality and construction of Louboutin pumps and Jimmy Choo pumps, Prada as well has very good construction, so does um, Valentino, but these to me are the two most classic looking shoes and can go at any age. They also have various heel heights. Mine are 100 millimeters, but they have. 60, they have 75, they have 85, they have various heel heights for whatever is comfortable for you to wear. Um, but they are just such a strong construction, their materials are much nicer, and they are so much better looking with an outfit. They elevate an outfit way more than just a cheap pair of pumps. I did not get a compliment on my dress, my jewelry, my hair, my makeup, none of that. I got at my cousin's wedding, I'm not kidding, 15 different people came up to me and complimented me on these shoes and wanted to know where I got these shoes. Um, now, Christian Louboutin shoes, I will show you the sole. They do wear a little, that is what they are supposed to do, that is what he designs them to do, but if you notice the arch is still perfectly that gorgeous red, um, and I've worn those plenty of times, but they are supposed to wear like that, that's not a fault, that is what's supposed to happen because he wanted it to wear off to leave little red marks wherever a woman walked. I don't know why that's just his thing he's french um but i love those now if you wanted a shoe with a more pointed toe equally as comfortable as my jimmy Choo romy pumps those are the romies are my jimmy Choo loves and the loves have more of a pointed toe let me actually pull these up so you can see so those are them you can see this one is clearly more pointed than this one um I love my loves. These, this particular pair were actually my wedding shoes, which we actually had shipped in from the London store because they didn't sell the 100 millimeter in the blue suede, which is Carolina blue, which is where I graduated from. Um, in the United States, they only had an 85. They had the 100 in Europe, in the UK, and they were able to call them and get them shipped to me and they actually ended up being like 100 bucks cheaper even with shipping from the uk than they would have been here in the states because prices in europe for luxury brands are cheaper in europe that is the cheapest place to get luxury goods if you're going to europe and you know you want a luxury good go get it in europe um you can save hundreds even thousands um so that is it for this list i hope that you really enjoyed this video if you did hit the red subscribe button down below also hit the bell to get notifications i plan to be posting things weekly if there's a type of video that you'd like to see leave it in the comments i would also love if you would give this video a like and if you leave in the comments either what your first luxury item was that you got or what you think your first luxury item is going to be that you purchased particularly if it's one of the items i mentioned on this list so thank you so much i'll catch you guys later have a good day bye